So welcome back to Behind the Team. Today we'll come back to An Lushan himself. Last we left off with him, his forces have been pushed back from both major capitals of China, Chang'an and Luoyang. But he had managed to retreat east. These sudden losses of the new Yan dynasty's armies was definitely helped by internal problems from within the rebel forces. The main one being the new emperor himself, An Lushan, who suffered from blindness and ulcers, leading some to speculate that he was suffering from acute diabetes. This of course made him very ill-tempered and paranoid, and he vented it by taking it out on everybody around him. He will whip, cane, and of course execute his servants even for minor displeasures. He rarely left his palace when he was in Luoyang, and word reached his oldest living son that his father was considering Ang Qing'en, a son to An Lushan's second wife, Lady Tuan, become heir apparent. This and the Empress' paranoia made Ang Qing Xiu fear for his life, and thus he struck first. On the night of the 29th of January 757 AD, with an unch and Ang Qing Xiu watching outside, another man took a sword and attacked the Emperor in his bedchamber. An Lushan tried to fight back, but could not find his sword he put below his bed and was killed. The next morning, the Unch announced to the Yan officials that the Emperor was seriously ill and had made An Ching Siu the crown prince. Only after being officially crowned did An Ching Siu tell of his father's demise. This arrangement did not last long though, as Xi Si Ming, a high-ranking general of the Yan, an old friend of An Lushan, then killed An Ching Siu and his brothers and took the crown for himself. He then buried his old friend with honours, but strangely as a prince, not an emperor, and even gave his old friend a rather unflattering name, unthinking. Thus, we can deduce that Xi Si Ming was probably driven more by power than friendship. He then managed to capture Luoyang again, but what comes around goes around as his own son, Si Chao Yi, killed him and proclaimed himself emperor. But Chao Yi neither had the lineage of An Lushan or the respect of his father among the rebels, resulting in a support base that was weak at best. But the Tang also then got a new emperor, but on more legitimate terms. As in 762, Emperor Su Zhong became very ill and abdicated the crown to Crown Prince Li Yi, who served in the army with Hui Ke allies. He is known today as Emperor Tai Zhong. Unlike his Yan counterpart, he was respected for his service in the military and had victories to call his own, such as against Arab and Persian pirates based in Hainan. The situation among the Yan at this point became futile, and to many, it was clear the game was up. Many officials and soldiers began to defect to the Tang. Xi Chao Yi could not even hold on to Luoyang when attacked and attempted to flee, but was cornered by Tang forces. Rather than be captured, he chose suicide. After eight disastrous years, the An Lushan rebellion was over. The Tang had survived, but was immensely weakened. A huge population had died, estimates from many sources ranging from 13 to 36 million, or rather 5 to 16 percent of the world's population at the time. Also, the problem that caused the war of autonomous generals was not only not solved, but made worse, with pardoned rebels even getting garrisons of their own. Also, the use of troops in the western outlying provinces during the rebellion also led to lost territory. In fact, the Tibetan Empire had retaken its Central Asian holdings from the Chinese and even the capital Chang'an at one point. The Tang emperors also borrowed heavily from the Yugyas during the rebellion and to pay the debt gave up control of the Tarim Basin. There was also a brain drain as not only deaf but scholars had their education interrupted for eight years in some cases and many were questioning whether the empire still had the mandate of heaven anymore. So the power of the warlords and their garrisons became so influential in time to come that in 907 AD the Tang will give way to the chaotic period known as the five dynasties and ten kingdoms. Before we leave though, I do know I have not mentioned generals Guo Ziyi and Li Guangpi's campaigns against the Yan after the first takeover of Chang'an in detail. The reason is that I felt the main reason for the demise of the Yan was by internal problems. So that was the An Lushan Rebellion. If you like videos like this, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. Till next word.